Hey there, everybody. It's an absolutely beautiful day here at Arrogant Web Headquarters, and I thought, why not get the hammer out and do some fun shooting today? We've already done a review of this gun, but you're never really done, are you? I mean, there's always something new to try, and we're calling these videos just range time. We're out here. Um, these aren't full reviews. It's just us having some fun out here on the bench at the range and sharing, you know, our results in real time with you guys. So today we've got the hammer. Uh, we've done our review with this. We shot the 320s, which shot pretty good. I want to try the 420s. They're going to give us a little more power, a little less velocity, but a little more power. And our results so far today have been, uh, you know, pretty interesting. Anywhere from 583 up to 601 foot-pounds. So we're right at that 600 foot-pound level. Um, pretty, pretty good results. This is it's a lot, a lot of energy, guys. It's a, that's a ton of power. So if you don't know much about the hammer, let me give you just the the short version of what we have here. First of all, um, the form factor of this is exceptional. It, it is not very long, it's not real heavy. It comes in around eight and a half pounds. I've got a, just a standard optic on it today. So I took the ATN off, I put on the Axion 4 to 16 by 44. Just a really nice, no frills, good hunting optic, and it's lightweight. I wanted to see you know, how this gun did with just a lightweight package. I have a lightweight bipod on it, so it adds a little bit of weight to it. So I'm probably running all in here at under 10 pounds, maybe four, uh, nine and a half pounds or so. It is a, full, a true 50 caliber, so the caliber is .510. So when you're buying your 50 cal air gun ammo, make sure it's specified as .510 and not .495, because that'll screw you up. It's a two-shot system, so uh, unlike a lot of uh, big bore guns that are single shot, or there are some that are that are multi-shot, but they don't generate this kind of power. Uh, maybe there's a couple now, but for the most part, the big power guns are single shot. This one is two shots, regulated system, so both shots should be right at the same point of impact, at the same power level. Today we're running tethered so that I'm not having to go fill it up after every every two-shot cycle. Um, I've got this set at just over 3,000, which is where our reg's at in the gun. So sh pretty typical of what you would get if you were just running off the tank. Um, the way it works is pretty straightforward. You load your magazine, slide it in. It's got multiple safeties. We have a, a block safety here, a bolt safety here. If that screws in, you can't cock the gun. Uh, we have a trigger safety, and there's a safety plate in here. So a lot of safety features going on. Uh, with this gun. It's super powerful, guys, so that's why they've kind of gone overboard with the safeties. The other thing that is important to know is that we call this the red zone. So you're firing from the magazine. There's not a probe that pushes this into the breech. This is the breech. So when the gun discharges, air does come out the side here. You do not want to have anything in this area. It will bite you. It's uncomfortable. So my typical thing, if I'm shooting at the bench, I will tend to want to kind of go like this with my scope. Obviously, you don't do that with this, kind of getting out of that habit. And I'll either grab the bipod or I'll grab up underneath the foregrip. You just don't want anything in this area and you'll be fine. It's not like having a revolver. When you fire a revolver, gas escapes from the front of the cylinder. You would never hold the cylinder while you drop the hammer or you, you know, lose a finger. So you want to be careful of this area. Gas or, you know, air does escape through here. So do be super careful about that. A couple other cool things about the gun, uses an AR grip, so that's kind of nice. If you have a like a particular grip you want to use, you can swap it out. It uses M-Lock rails, so you can put M-Lock accessories on here. It's a very, very cool gun, and I, one of the things I, I really like about it is, again, going back to the form factor. Sorry, my phone just went off. Let's just shut that down here. Okay. It's the form factor. It's not super long. They've done a lot of engineering in here to keep it very practical from an everyday going around and hunting, whether you're stalking uh, in a blind, having to carry this up to a tree stand or all that kind of stuff. They've, they've done a lot to really make it very usable. Um, it is very loud. I will be wearing ear protection and it does have a heck of a recoil, which is why my hat's around backwards because I kept smacking the brim of my hat on the, hat on the scope. So uh, you're going to see that. It does have a bit of recoil, which is part of why I'm out again, because if you don't shoot this regularly, uh, it's, it, it takes a little to kind of get back into the swing of things with it, because the recoil is it's significant, and it is quite loud. So um, it takes a, little, takes a little time getting used to it, but it is very fun to shoot. 
and uh, let's actually do some shooting now. Uh, I will be running the FX chronograph today um, to capture our shots. Let's see if I can get this locked in here. We are shooting at 50 yards, and all right. Um, I've done a little sighting in so far, and what I'm finding is um, it, it, I really got to spend more trigger time with this. If you're going to get really good with this, you're going to have to spend some time with it because it's easy to anticipate the recoil and also the noise. And you got to work that out of your habits, uh, out of your technique to really see the accuracy. I am getting really good results with these in the various testings I've done. So hopefully now that we're filming, we're going to get some good results too. All right. So let me go ahead and start a new string. And we are, okay, let's make sure we're connected too. All right, we're connected, new string. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, cock is open. All right, so this is empty. And here's how you load it, it's pretty cool. We're just gonna drop these, these are some big slugs. Just drop it in like this. And then we slide this right in. And as you hear it, click, click, now you're actually ratcheting it into position. Um, uh, scope caps. So one of the things you have to remember to do is after you've slid that in, you have to make sure you pull your or push your bolt all the way forward. If you don't, then the gun doesn't shoot right. And you want to make sure that's always forward. All right. Uh, I owe ears, 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 ears. <clears throat> okay. So I've got my scope on 10 power. It's not a first focal plane. So if I were going to hunt with this, I'd probably set it up for 10 power, learn my spacing mill dots for ranging, and just leave it there. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Safety's off. Hands out of the red zone. And let's take a shot. Left to right was good. Okay, one of the cool things about this uh, is like no effort to cock the gun. They've done such a cool job with the engineering of the valve and everything. It's just really, really impressive. Um, so we did 793 on that, which puts us at 580, 587. We need to be over 800 feet, feet per second to see 600 foot pounds. Let's see if we can get there. See, that was me pulling the shot. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Shut the bolt. Let's see if I can do better. <clears throat> oh, you know what? We're not going to hear our person talking if I turn this off. Hmm. All right, well, <clears throat> hopefully I don't get too many texts. <laughs> All right, so that was 798 feet per second, so 594, so close to 600. Okay, here we go. I gotta do better holding still here. It really is just trigger control and follow through. 793. Oh, see, I pulled it again. Dang it. Okay. At least I pull consistently. Let's try it again. There it is. 800 gives us 597. We need 801. We need 801. Come on, 801. <laughs> okay, so if I jerk the trigger, that's when I'm pulling. If I'm really smooth and deliberate and just slowly pull it back, that seems to be the key. So let's see if I can, if I can dial, dial that in here. Oh. 
No, that one, I wasn't ready for that. Dang it. 805, hey, 604, yay. There's our 600 foot-pounds. Yeah, that trigger just, it scared me. All right, here we go. Boy, I just need to be able to do that twice in a row. I don't think it captured that one. That's all right. I'll try it again here. All right. Tight. So, yeah, I was anticipating the shot already. I was jerking. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where that led. I'll have to go to the tape on that one. The tape. Film. <laughs> the chip. Okay. So I'm certainly in the kill zone on all my shots, even when I'm not perfect on my shot placement. Or my, my pull, I should say. Let's see if I can... See what I can do with these last two shots here. So that's in that right area. I should check my pressure. Oh, that should be all right. Yeah. I just anticipate that second shot my pull. Let's do it again. Two more. All right, well, it may be that just my group is a little bit to the right, so I could just bring that to the left a little bit. If I could fill that circle with those shots like that, it's a dead whatever I'm hunting. So I'm going to just adjust a little bit here, just trying to remember which way is which. I need to go... Oh, there it is. All right, I need to go left. All right, that might have been way too far. <sighs> Let's try. Not going to be much left of that cardboard down there. Okay, let's see what we got here. We need to come up a little bit too. left a little bit more. There we go. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go a little more left. 
I always forget which way's left. It has it written on it, but it's on the side I can't see. Okay. <laughs> you figure after 14 years, I should know better, but I don't. I still struggle with right and left, I guess. Oops. Okay. All right. Now we're now we're on to something. Eight hundred seven. I think we got it. I think I just needed to bring that over a little bit, up and left. Um, maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe back a couple. Um, yeah, we had a bunch that are going over 600 foot-pounds too, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. That was 611 foot-pounds on that last shot. I'm pretty sure I haven't really got this gun broken in yet all the way um, because the more I shoot it, uh, the more power we're getting. And those regs do take some time, but it is a challenge to come out here and shoot this. I mean, we're going to go through 50 rounds. It's not exactly cheap and you need a ton of air. So it does take some time to get the gun to break in, but those last shots are all like that, which is really what I want to see. That is impressive, guys. Um, over 600 foot-pounds, does say, take some time to get used to the trigger pull. The trigger pull is fine, it's just the recoil and the, uh, the noise, which with these is not, the noise isn't a problem, but there is, you do anticipate the recoil. It's not insignificant. So, takes a little more trigger time. I think this is still, as far as a big bore hunting air gun, in my opinion, this is the gun to beat on the market. It's not the most powerful, but it is certainly uh, one of the better designed and certainly great for multiple types of hunting disciplines, whether you're stalking, whether you're sitting, um, this will do both and it's easy to get in and out of the woods with it because it's not so you know, huge to have to deal with. Just a really, really fun gun. So I'm gonna still stay out here and have some more fun today, but hopefully you guys uh, are seeing what we can do with the uh, with the 420s, the 100 supply 420s. Um, they shot really, really well. I could, if I could just keep them like that. Now that we've got everything sort of dialed in, and this thing is a killing machine, guys. So that's going to be it for now, guys. If you would like these videos, please, you know, like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments, and uh, I'm going to go have some more fun. See you guys. Okay, it's time for a little bonus footage. Um, I've got my steel target set up. We've got a fairly large plate at 50. We've got a smaller plate at 75, and then we have a fairly large plate again at 100. I don't know where I need to be on my mill dot, so <clears throat> I thought we'd, we're pretty much dead on at 50. I'm not sure where I'll need to hold over for 75, and I'm not sure where I'll need to be at 100, but let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so 50, bolt shut. And I'm at 10 power on the scope. Yeah. Yeah. There's 
597 foot pounds. All right. Um, I think I hit pretty much center. I'm not sure. Pretty close. I'm going to go two mils on the 75. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's too much fun. And then 100, probably three mils. So two put me there, three. I'm gonna say three and a half mils at 100. Ooh. Not sure where I went on that. Maybe four. I pull it. Let's go four. There it is. <laughs> All right, so now we know. Let's do it. See if we can run the targets. Oh, I can't hit the 75, can I? It's all twisted up. <laughs> well, maybe I can. It's crooked. All right. 50. 798. We'll just jump right to 100. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it one more time. Okay, 50. Oh, I went right over it. Come on. I over-adjusted. We can't end on that. Just this time, Rick. Yeah, I clipped it. Hey, we're almost out of rounds. I think we should just finish this off. What do you think? Go ahead and finish these out. better. Okay, breathe. That was a good one. Three left. Okay, fifty. Seventy-five. I'm see if I can hit it here. It's two mils. Ah, oh, 
under it. Last shot. I may be running out of air here. Uh, yep, All right, this one. Here we go. I'm going to go three mils. See if we can end on a good note here. Oh, nope. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun nonetheless. We shot a bunch of bullets. I'm out out of that box. I'm not going to open up a new one. And I think I'm running out of air. That's why we started to get a little inconsistent there. But guys, this is a lot of fun shooting steel, shooting paper. Obviously, this gun is really designed for hunting. That's what it's meant to do. And we're getting, yeah, we're, we're really dropping off here. So my rag still trying to fill the gun. <laughs> we're dropping off and we're not, we're not into the 800 feet per second like we were. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it on this short little fun video. Umarex Hammer, 420 grain slugs. Um, you could you could expect to get about 600 foot pounds out of this um, if everything's running right. And accuracy is certainly there. Um, just a lot of fun. Guys, that's going to be it. My name is Rick Kutcher here with Aragon Web. Thanks for watching.